number here. Uh, currently, I guess I'm ranked as a number one wizard, at least on Europe. I uh, have no idea about Americas or, let's say, Korea at the moment, uh, but at least here I'm getting quite a lot of whispers and questions about like my gear build, how does it work and so on. Guess it would be easier to just make a video about it. Uh, as you can see, I'm using a six-piece Firebird, which is like the only option at the moment for a wizard because other abilities are and sets obviously are completely underwhelming. Uh, I'm using a furnace uh, because, well, it's the ultimate hard heater and it has a fairly high amount of damage against the leads. The weapon itself is 1.0 attack, so um, you don't really waste any kind of your, let's say, uh, damage uh, because the Firebird dot itself and uh, Mammoth, which I'm currently using as a damage increase, uh, do not really benefit anyhow out of attack speed, so pretty much any item which will contain this stat is worthless. Um, the rolls on gear are kinda obvious. There is nothing way too exciting here. I'm not using the third gem at the moment because I didn't really level up my Bane of the Trapped. It's only rank 12, so because I didn't really do a lot of grifts. Uh, the others are Zeiss Stone of Vengeance and uh, the Bane of the Powerful. These are the most obvious choices for pretty much any setup uh, involving Firebird at least for Wizard at the moment. Uh, the Strong Arms for a temporary damage increase, a uh, string of years just because of like the insane amount of tank it does provide and you will eventually take a melee damage and at higher tiers of Greater Rift well it will destroy you so you kinda want to actually mitigate this shit somehow. Uh, I'm using a double unity setup, didn't manage to get a new one yet with the critical hit damage so I would drop the intelligence instead of crit hit damage and well stone of jordan well the rings are kinda obvious oh foo, foo, foo. well i guess there is nothing else to tell here about the paragons well movement speed this one is mandatory uh, intelligence some would opt for vitality or even max arcane power these are both completely viable solution but like movement speed is mandatory this one you kinda want to max out and you don't really want to get it on your gear because well it just doesn't cut the investment of points uh, offense well crit hit chance crit hit damage first these are the major damage increases cooldown reduction well just because I can and the attack speed is basically a dump of an extra points for me because well essentially it does nothing at least like in this amount it does not increase my damage uh, if I had a lot of this uh, the animation would be faster but well not the stat you really want to go for with this setup in terms of defense I always prefer uh, the resist all or armor in the first place depending on the rolls on your gear for instance if you got like two armor rolls well the armor in some cases would be superior to go first uh, then life region just because of the passive region you really want this one and life percent is like the most worthless of them all uh, so currently it's only four percent because I'm kinda like low on paragons utility uh, resource cost reduction first life on heat for like the anyhow passive uh, mitigation area damage I don't really know how does it interact with the abilities I use because it's like extremely hard to test out but well gold find is worthless in greater rifts anyway so I use this one um, in terms of build 
Uh, let's see the skills. Skills, where is okay? Uh, we use apocalypse here just to basically tag the entirety of the screen with the dot. Black hole with Evan Evan Horizon. Well, there is no other option on higher tiers because you really want to get rid of some shit under your uh, feet. Uh, like some would opt for, let's say, um, the supermassive, uh, just because of the radius increase, it's kinda a nice option, yet I don't really like it, because, well, you really want to get rid of the shit under your feet. Uh, so I will stay with the Event Horizon, uh, though for like T6 or like lower tiers of rifts, well, obviously you can go supermassive. Mammoth, uh, well, uh, this one is basically here just to increase some AoE damage uh, and uh, some single target on the Rift Guardian. Uh, it's kinda decent, especially when you use it with the slow weapon. Uh, energy armor, this one is pretty much mandatory. Some would opt for, uh, let's say, Force Armor, uh, which is the other good choice. Um, to kind of normalize the incoming damage, though I'm currently sticking with Prismatic, it works quite well for me. Mirror image with duplicates, there is another option with, let's say, Mocking Demise. Uh, it actually works quite well too. I did use this one on PTR and it was more than okay, but currently I'm using the duplicates just because, well, they're bloody dumb, so you kind of hope that at least some of them will actually use the spells. Teleport, uh, currently with Wormhole, the other options are Safe Passage and the, the Calamity. Uh, I personally prefer Wormhole at the moment, uh, because, well, you have to backtrack a lot, and sometimes backtracking uh, actually involves, like, running through the entirety of the screen filled with some bloody mobs and you don't really want to take an extra hit so uh, this one works like the best for me there is an option of actually skipping the Hydra uh, some people would go for let's say the slow time this is a really viable option uh, like mm, some runes are kinda really useful and like uh, you can easily incorporate the Bane of the Trapped in your build this way though I personally prefer Mammoth at least for now uh, the passives are kinda straightforward uh, well blur just because of the damage decrease this one is mandatory, Illusionist, well, this one is mandatory, uh, Dominance, uh, this is an optional one, uh, you can opt for, let's say, a Conflagration, or, uh, I don't know, Temporal Flux, just for an extra stroll, some people would go YOLO and actually act for Audacity, uh, this is a viable option, yet on higher tiers, uh, you really don't want to stay close to the mobs. Um, so, I'm currently sticking with Dominance, it's somehow passive uh, increase to your EHP, because, well, stuff will eventually die of the dot and you will get stacks. Uh, obviously, completely useless on most of the Rift Guardians, but, well, in terms of Rift Guardians, you just really want to outrange them. The unstable anomaly, this one basically prevents you from getting one shot, so I kind of think that this one is mandatory too. Some people are, uh, actually opt for setups without teleport at all, like using, let's say, the force weapon. Um, I personally completely hate this setup. First of all, wizard without teleport is not a wizard, in my opinion. Uh, the second one, you really want an extra mobility, uh, because, well, some situations require, like, instant movement, and uh, whenever you get stuck with your glorious 20% damage increase, well, you are fucked, uh, and you can actually get fucked somewhere in the middle of, like, four minutes run through a cave, and then you will have to resurrect uh, on like the start. Well, obviously this is about softcore. With hardcore, well, 
even worse. Uh, this setup I'm currently using is actually completely viable for a hardcore, uh, though I would suggest even on this gear level and like uh, the Paragon like mine, I would suggest not going higher than let's say level 35 because uh, after this uh, the damage could be insurmountable and like even a small like spike would eventually kill you but level 35 is skin day cakewalk at least like currently for me as you can see the toughness is 90 mil well using the Templar it's effectively like 38 mil so I'm kinda durable though at like level 39 some stuff can easily one shot me so that's for the hardcore players you really don't want to push it that forward at least in a solo game I don't really know what the situation with the group play at the moment about like the incorporation of crowd control from different classes but in solo game as a wizard on a hardcore higher than 35 well it is a YOLO play uh, a really risky decision so let's do something I have a level 36 key I will show you the actual gameplay which is not that exciting as most people would think of uh, this rift is basically a dump by the way oh not that bad actually thought it would be way worse as you can see we have elites here like elite is your best friend uh, the fat stuff is like your second best friend and if you actually aim for the top uh, mm, your gameplay will look like this you want to tag everything you could possibly imagine and take it with yourself uh, you have no time to actually uh, fight stuff because well on higher tiers for instance uh, these champs would have like I don't know 10 bill hit points if they get an extra health and uh, well uh, fighting a 10 bill uh, elite just to get the orbs is not the best solution obviously you really want stuff to die itself and then you just backtrack and get the orbs well sometimes you really don't want to push way too hard because well certain affixes will kill you unless you have a Zephyrian or Cameo and these amulets I personally think are completely the best even counting the existence of a Hellfire one an extra passive just doesn't cut the loss of the uh, elemental immunity I personally think Cameo is like really the best one because Jailer is the worst stuff you could encounter here I don't know if I got all the orbs. I not. Well, th this this place is really decent. Uh, has a lot of fat stuff and like not that much ranged. Though it was kinda small, obviously. Uh, most of the times when you encounter the zones from Act Four, they are in the dump uh, you really want some square areas uh, these are the best and like most populated let's say the one based on Vault of Assassin or like the uh, I don't know the Keep Depths uh, and the Act 5 clone of the Keep Depths area I don't really remember the name uh, if you get a one which is square, uh, most of the time you are a winner instantly because these areas uh, will be really bloody populated even uh, if the population in general is a dump like let's say scan skeletons and so on these do not uh, grant that much of a progression even when you kill them in a big bloody pox so as you can see we are basically passively killing everything here and well it works quite well Uh, the worst shit you could encounter with this kind of playstyle is uh, Realm of the Banishment, uh, Banished as far as I remember the name of the location. Uh, mm, stuff just gets stuck all the time and you can't really kite it. Oh, this one is dead already. Thought it would just like drop the dot off. 
uh, about the range of the dot itself, even though uh, the description uh, says that uh, the stuff will tick till it dies, well, it's not really true. Uh, the range of your effective dot uh, is about 100 yards, maybe a little more. Whenever you outrange it, uh, it will fall off. So you kind of have to bear this in mind. Mm, this uh, mob pattern, most of the time, is really bad unless you actually encounter it in a square area. Uh, because, well, mobs are not that good. Uh, the squishy shit does not really give you anything. And oppressors, which obviously come in packs and really good by themselves, uh, are kinda rare. Okay, well, as you can see, it's like really, really, really hard to take the, this kind of damage. Most of the time you really don't want to kite backwards, but mm, sometimes it's like the only option when the, the next floor is, is, is ahead of bloody hell. Uh, whenever you encounter a pack which uh, has a jailer or thunderstorm, you really don't want to push harder. Uh, you want to kill this pack and the stuff you have stored up to this point, uh, because well, it eventually will kill you. And uh, about the goatman, uh, there is another problem. Uh, the spear goatman will destroy you if you find a big pack. So uh, at this point, you would either want to like skip a big chunk of mobs. Uh, because you really want to outrange them, so the dot will eventually fall up. Or uh, kill them by small packs, like using the black hole and so on. Uh, these shamans actually deal a shit ton of damage with their uh, like uh, cold ability, though it's mm, not that hard to avoid whenever you actually know that it is coming. Yet, like, Goatman is one of the best stuff in terms of progression, but uh, really hard to bear. At some points it's even harder to, let's say, uh, Winged Assassins or Anarchs. Well, this rift was actually quite nice. N obviously not the best, but like really good. So, we have a shit ton of time and now the rift guardian will spawn as soon as this pack ticks out. Uh, this beach is pretty much harmless, to be honest, uh, unless you actually try to face tank it. Uh, this is one of the best bosses you could encounter, and uh, you actually can corner her on some points, like let the Templar do the tanking, and she won't even move. Like, But here I would actually kill it properly, uh, so she will move a lot and will not take like most of the damage from the Hydra but well the level is kinda low so it doesn't really matter at level like 39 I would opt for actually corner in this beach however this cliff would one shot you so you don't really want to take the melee damage this is one of the easiest bosses Invites. This is really annoying. Well, 
as you can see, you can just out range her and like increase the damage from Zai to maximum. 50 yards is pretty much the entire screen range. It obviously takes some time, but kinda easy. Well, what what is the hit point? Well, it's only 21 wheel. Sounds kinda ridiculous, but when you go even further, 21 wheel is not that much. <laughs> Kinda decent result. Well, I hope that uh, this video will actually help anyone to climb higher. Uh, see you on top of the, of the ladders and see you in seasons. Enjoy guys and like be a better wizards. <laughs>